How big are those big boats that you're going to be putting these on? 230 meter. It doesn't look so impressive in this, but imagine when you scale up all, then you will also understand the wing size. The maritime sector is mobilising to hit net zero emission targets by around 2050. Low carbon liquid and gaseous fuels will play a part, but many, including shipping companies, are taking inspiration from their forebears and a 5,000 year old technology catching the wind. So this motorboat, this is the past, and that is the future. We're now out on the water in Stockholm, where Oceanbird is also adapting the sail. The Swedish company was born from global shipping company Valenius Marine's desire to eliminate emissions. But Oceanbird won't just be retrofitting vessels. They're also building a brand new cargo ship that will run mostly on wind. Nicholas Dahl is the managing director. So you think of the maritime industry, it, it's very polluting. It's going into the air, it's going into the water, and there's the noise pollution as well. So what difference will Oceanbird make, do you think? I mean, Oceanbird will play an important role. I think. In general, wind will play an important role. We don't want to put in a new environmental issue by solving the one that we have. And that's always the risk when you have some kind of burning fuel, you will always get some residuals. So this is a completely natural way of, of taking the ship forward. This is a research model, but computer simulations can provide accurate numbers of what full-scale vessels could save. So what kind of savings will these wings have or make? It's always difficult. When you talk about savings, it depends on the route, it depends on what kind of ships you put them on and, and so on. But in this case, if you take a large car carrier that this would represent and on a favourable route, then we talk about, I mean, 7-10% of savings. So quite substantial for one wing. Oceanbird says each sale could save up to 675,000 litres of diesel a year, or about 1,920 metric tonnes of carbon dioxide. Here's how they work. The wings consist of a mainsail and a flap, 40 metres high and 14 metres wide. They form an asymmetric shape, where the wind on the outer part accelerates, but decreases on the inner part. That increases the lift, which thrusts the ship forward. The sails can even be rearranged to create what's known as camber, a curved angle that helps generate even more force. And the wings can also be folded down flat on the deck. I'm just looking at this seven metre model and I'm just imagining how big are those big boats that you're going to be putting these on? 230 metre <laughs> is the scale for this one. Wow, it's actually hard to imagine. Yeah, it doesn't look so impressive in, in this, but imagine when, when you scale up all, then you will also understand the wing size. Oceanbird says the first vessel retrofitted with one of their wings will sail by 2024. And the new ship, a car carrier with six wing sails, is expected to go on its maiden voyage in 2027. But there's more research to do with PhD students from KTH Royal Institute of Technology and Oceanbird testing energy forces, including using the seven metre model. You've got sensors everywhere, right? What are you attaching here on the sail? We are connecting all the electronics because we have one so-called captain, one main computer on board that's somewhere in the middle. But all the other ones, uh, the other com computers, little microcontrollers, they help collecting all data from the wings. We have sensors in the wings as well and send all data to the captain. And how much data will you, I mean, you're just gathering everything you possibly can. Yeah, indeed, because the experiments you, you can never exactly plan now. It's much more wind than we expected. So we will collect different data than it was anticipated. And of course, we do usually particular tests. So for example, we could uh, sail on a constant course and change the angles of attack of the wings and see what pressures we get over the profiles. Um, that was the purpose in the last test. And the idea with this was to um, figure out the aerodynamic interactions between the wings. A lot of work took place on land as well. The sails have been tested in a wind tunnel to understand the physics that could let them propel even the larger ships at sea. Oceanbird says even small changes to the environment could significantly change the aerodynamics. 
Yeah. You've done a lot of testing in wind tunnels yeah. as well, but I mean, nothing beats actually coming out onto it. Exactly, because uh, the conditions in the wind tunnel, even even though we have real wind and it's not simulated or so, are way too perfect. Uh, we have constant inflow over the entire wing and now it, real wind is changing all the time in all directions, in speed, in angle, everything. And uh, something like that we cannot reproduce exactly in the wind tunnel. This model has been running tests for three years and the sails themselves have changed. So the model that we're looking at at the moment and the wing sails, they're different from the ones I've seen which have a flap. So this is an older design. You see the steps on the wings. The idea was to make it telescopic so that you can reduce the sail area by retracting it yep. into itself. But now with the flap, the wing is actually much smaller, it's less high. Mm but approximately the same uh, efficiency, so we can be as performant with a smaller wing. So is there actually any point in, in, in testing an old design? I mean, what are you going to learn from that? On this model, we are measuring where the wind is coming from, and then we calculate an angle where the wind should be in order to have a fixed angle of attack in that case. But the wind is changing all the time, so here there's a computer calculating this all the time and then adjusting the wings also all the time. We also look at the entire boat and how it is sailing. Interesting to look at with those wings as well is the aerodynamic interactions between the wings. So we have four wings in a row behind each other and they don't see the same inflow. But what we can do here, we have sensors in the wings that measure the pressure distribution and it depends on where, which position on the boat the wing has, how much force it can generate. So that's something we can study anyways, no matter which shape of wing. Is this an exciting project to work on? Because in many ways you're redesigning boats. Ah, we are redesigning the way of propulsion, yeah. And indeed, that's a really cool thing to do. Oceanbird wants to retrofit its wing sails on all kinds of ships. Containers, tankers and possibly cruise ships. That's Emil Kotz's job. Part of your role here is that you're retrofitting ships with the ocean bird wings. I mean, I'm guessing you can't just, you know, put a wing on and that's that. No, that's right. Uh, these vessels were optimised for their cargo handling and what they are brought to, to ship over the world. So if you put on a wing sail, you cannot really do this, even it looks really simple here, but you need to consider all the reinforcements that's required in these areas in order to transfer the forces from the wing sail down to the vessel. And what you need to consider here is the cargo handling as well. These hatches are sliding sideways. So the only area you have place to put something on is between these hatches. Okay, so it has to go in these places here. Yeah, these spots. And there. I guess these also fold down, so you've got to think of, oh, you can't block the hatch. No, exactly. Um, but the hatch is only opening in the center line. So if you first fold the wing sail and then tilt it down, you wouldn't interfere with the opening in the hatches. And you've got to figure out the configuration of where you're going to put those wing sails Absolutely as well. Absolutely right, yeah. Otherwise it's going to tip over. Yeah. And that would be your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah. We need to consider every aspect of it. It has to do with uh, the balance of the vessel uh, as well. Uh, because if you sail with these many units, you will not only have a forward thrust, but you will have a side force hitting the hull and you need to compensate that with your rudder. So you need to make sure that the installed rudder is efficient and capable of handling these side forces in order to keep uh, a stable course. So it's all about efficiency and you've got to think about what time in the water as well because most want their, their trade going from route A to B quickly. But you know, will this be a, a slower method? No, it doesn't have to be. You can have the same objective to always be on time uh, you can see the wings as a complementary use of your main propulsion. So if there's a little wind, you will still be supported by your main engine and it allows you to be on time. Efficiency also extends to the wing sails mechanics, which are in a container on deck, saving precious cargo space inside the hull. So this is our hydraulic lab, where we try to get, before we have everything up and running, it feels very important for us to be testing on real hardware. The wing sails are moved with multiple hydraulic cylinders. So this one is then for the tilting part, and this would then be for the flap, where we also want to symbolize, I mean, uh, or test how, what angle and, and how to push So that. just to make this clear, one of these is going to just tilt it down and bring it back up again, and this one is controlling the flap yes. also, uh, when it's upright. Exactly. Okay. And then we always rotate the wing in the right position. To catch the wind. To catch the wind. So instead of in the old days when they'd be pulling on the ropes, that's your rope. That's my <laughs> rope, exactly. 
And of course, it's all operated by computer. So this is actually the brain of the whole system. And we then put down into the container together with the hydraulic system to keep them very close because we want to have one place where you do the service and you can handle all of those things at the same place. So one of these in the container, but will you also have another one close to the captain on the bridge? Exactly. The system must be durable to withstand the conditions at sea, which is why I was taken completely by surprise to see what the wing sails are made of. What you see here is sections from our panels. So what we are doing here is that we are testing the strength of the panel. So you have what you call a sandwich design. So it's a glass fiber on the outside and the glass fiber. And then in the distance here, you have a core that is then made out of recycled PET uh, bottles. So this has also been an important part for our sustainability uh, work. A great way to recycle thousands of these. Surely this would be thicker though? No, this is the, the actual, uh, so what you have inside is a steel mast and then you will then put the panel outside. Uh, I mean that looks system. like nothing! <laughs> yeah, but when you have them then 40 meter it's still quite a big weight and, uh, and this is also how you put the different laminates, will, you can create different strength in different directions. So this is what you then are checking and testing. There's been a lot of debate recently about how new sustainable technologies could actually be more harmful to the environment over time. So how long will ocean birds' wing sails last? We've done a life cycle analysis to see what kind of CO2 emissions do we have when we produce it and how fast is our payback time. And what we can see on this wing sail is the fully one, including transportation and so on. We have a payback time of less than a year. So it's still... Um, we will work to reduce that even further, but I mean, if you think of that these have a life length of 25, 30 years, uh, it's quite impressive. It's quick payback. It's a very quick payback from the CO2 emissions, yeah. We've been sailing for thousands of years. The ability to cross the oceans has transformed human history. But could the answer to climate change lie in harnessing the forces of nature once again? This technology in many ways is in its infancy, but there are other competitors out there doing this kind of thing, isn't there? Yes, for the wind community, I would say there are a lot of similar type of, of wings, but also the other types of um, wind solutions. So, you know, in the future, will it be the survival of the fittest, the very best will be the best? <laughs> yeah, no, but it's not only about the technology. I mean, it's also about how do you handle everything around it with the team around it, how do, where do you get the best measurements in order to trim the sail in the best way so it gets as much performance out. How do you handle service around the world? Uh, which is a very important part for the marine industry because ships have a tendency to move around and you want to be able to get spare parts everywhere, service everywhere and so on. So there is a complete package and then it will be natural that the few technology will survive in that way and also the best uh, companies. I think it's important for the whole market because you cannot do this transformation yourself. We can learn a lot from each other. We need to build up competence with class societies. I think it's more recognition that they see wind as a really good potential for the future in order to reduce emissions. Mm -hmm.